Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Church in Ripley, Mississippi, for our Sunday morning worship service on Sunday, February 18, 2024. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. We are presently worshiping at Mojo's Sports Bar and Grill, located at 830 G City Avenue South in Ripley. Now, let's join the service already in progress. down a little bit but that's okay we got to keep plugging along plugging along and uh, let's start let's set a goal one year from today let's have a goal that we don't have enough seats in here who's on who? okay y'all have coffee drink the coffee and who agrees with that let's set that as a goal yeah amen okay Amen. There we go. Are we ready to get started? Don't forget, tonight, 4.30 p.m., right here, in this very place, Charlie Boo's birthday party. We must show up and support our 10-year-old. You must show up. You must show up. <laughs> so after he was baptized, John, by John the Baptist, Jesus went by himself to the wilderness. And he was tempted there. And he spent 40 days in the desert. Jesus was tempted to become relevant, spectacular, and powerful. And during the course of Lent, we'll talk about those three things. So today, we begin our journey with Jesus through this season of Lent. And it's going to bring us face to face with some of our own weaknesses and temptations. Who this morning was tempted to stay in bed? Yeah, huh? I know. But we had to face it and get over it. So let us worship our God then and walk the journey together with him, seeking God's Holy Spirit as our guide and our companion along the way. Who moved my chair?
together. stand if you can. If you can't, that's fine. But you need to sing this out. And it's victory in Jesus. And I got this one just for the Royster. And Roy had an eventful evening last night. So he's at home with some Ben Gay. Ready? What's the first thing there? Actually, that's the same. There's no victory in Jesus? Well, you know what? Huh? I'm not. I swear. I heard an old, old story. Hold up. Hold up. You see, I probably would do this better with no music. Because I don't have to get high. All right. So we go here to media. Where's <laughs> media? Okay. Click it. Type in BIC. Here you go. This is the old. This is. This is not the one that I sent to you. Okay. But it'll work. <laughs> Everyone sing. Turn it, turn it up. Way up.
seat. Okay, have a seat. We're going to have to work on our sand. Uh, okay, here we go. Concerns of the church. And they'll be on the back. So, good morning. Thanks for coming. And, you know, we just have to start inviting people. So, I know this is self serving, <coughs> but on Tuesday marks a milestone in my life and Charlene's life. We've been married 40 years on Tuesday. Woo I know. 40. 40. 40. 40. Yep. Just... So Lenten continues. It's a season that where we pray, we fast, we, we it's almsgiving. That just doesn't mean money. That means of our service, of our time. And every Wednesday I'll be posting, uh, just like we did this week, a Lenten meditation, so follow along with that. Next week, Charlene and I'll be gone for our anniversary. We'll be out on the high seas. Jennifer will lead worship. I don't know who's going to preach yet, or she's going to preach, or just do all music, whatever. She's going to let me know. And last, surprise. Huh? It's a surprise. I think you should ask Butch to preach. <laughs> you might get the wrong message. <laughs> I ought to they put, need it. I ought to put this on, so... Yeah, that was about two minutes of... Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> One of those Japanese movies. Hey, we need the core group to meet um, as soon as we can because we got a plan for Easter, for uh, Palm Sunday, <clears throat> and we also got to get going on the, uh, the church establishment paperwork and stuff. And thanks to all who are leading. Uh, Aries going. Aries. Sorry. April is it started with an A. April's going to read scripture today. And Miss Addison did our candles. Yay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any now for prayer requests? What do we have for prayer requests? Uh, I want to pray for the county. Yes. Anyone else? Welcome back to Brian. That you get reacclimated to the beautiful world of Tippecanoe, Mississippi. Um, I didn't hear what he said. Trace? Diquez. How did I get Trace out of Diquez? Shut up, Jax. Did I get Edison right? Okay. Anyone else? All right, Jax is feeling puny. Olivia is under the weather. Jennifer's not feeling too good. And we might let you out of that special music if your throat's not up to it. It's up to you. You let us know. So, if there's nothing else, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we give you thanks for today. Thank you for bringing those here. Lord, you know, I counted the numbers and, well, you did more with less people. So we just ask your Holy Spirit continue to inspire us and to help us to witness boldly and to invite, invite, invite. And Father, we thank you for everything that you've do, you do for us, most especially for the saving grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. As we begin this Lenten season, help us to look inside of us. Help us to see what's preventing us from getting closer to you. Father, for the short tempers, give us patience. For the despair, give us hope. For the frustration, give us calm. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, lead us through Golgotha and Calvary onto the road to Emmaus. Father, we lift those that we mentioned today in prayer, most especially the Pounders family, give comfort to them. And we know that their daughter, their sister, their grandchild 
is now basking in your glory. But yet the hurt in this world is still very real. So comfort them and show us what we can do to touch that family. We pray for Maya. We want the baby to be strong and healthy, but we know she's in discomfort. So give her relief and give understanding to those around her. Father, we pray for Daquez. You know his needs. Lord, I pray for all those who are sick in our family. And I pray for those in our family <laughs> that need to have that relationship with you. Amen. Help us to touch them lovingly and boldly. But right now, Father, we just give you thanks for this new little church you started. We give you thanks for all the gifts and blessings of our daily life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, name above all names. The hymn. Okay. Jesus, name above all names. That one. Everyone sings it. Huh? Yeah, everyone sings it. Everyone sings <laughs> Name above all, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed be
don't let Jennifer's throat rest. Sorry, sorry. That's not nice of me to sorry. have it bleed back here all over my shirt. It's not good. There is an offering <laughs> basket there. I forgot to announce that. If you if you're so inclined, just put some money in there. We got sixty six bucks in the treasury right now. That's pretty good. Hey, the last church I was at, there were times when they couldn't pay a bill. So sixty six bucks. We we high on that. We're with the you know a thousand hills with all the cattle on it. That's a scripture reference. Never mind. Lord, open our hearts and our minds by the power, by the power of, the of your Holy Spirit. Spirit. That as, as the, the scriptures, scriptures are read and your word, and your word proclaimed, proclaimed, we, we may, may hear with joy what you say to us today. today. Amen. Go, girl. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Lord. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love, and with you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and the angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The word of God for the people of God. Praise, Praise be, be to God. God. Thank you. Give me back my pen. You've got your own. So it's, it's lonely <laughs> up here, don't you think, Jennifer? It's what? Lonely up here. Yes. We need to go down there. Oh, yeah. So, let's do that. You tell Roy I missed that step of <laughs> So, <laughs> we're going to get this right sooner or later. Where'd you get? Did, by the way, you need to talk to your nephew about why you got that big chair, but then he said you couldn't climb up on it to sit in it. To, that's what he said. So, hey, I want you to think back. Now, some of us are older than dirt, and we used we didn't have all these these things. I hate these things. These cell phones. You know, the kids. You see them. They're playing their games and all that. They don't know how to interact anymore. When we were a kid, ask mom, we had things like, I don't know, dirt, rocks, sticks, balls, grass. Those were our video games. And there was a game that they taught us in kindergarten, back when they taught things in kindergarten, called, ready? See if you can remember it, follow the leader. Anyone remember playing Follow the Leader? We can't. I've got memories of playing Follow the Leader. I have memories of me not following the leader and getting in trouble in school for not doing that. But the point of the game was what? To follow the leader, to do exactly as the leader said. So if the leader is walking like this, we walk like this. But if the leader is walking like this, we're doing that. The leader turns around, we do that. Follow the leader. Sometimes we played that game for fun. Most of the times I played that game because my teacher told me I had to. But in this season of Lent, and this is a big deal. You know, I saw something on Facebook by fellow pastors. Well, I'm not going to do Lent because that's such a Catholic thing. And I was so tempted to say, how stupid can you possibly be? But I did. Because it's not a Catholic thing. It's a Jesus thing. Jesus is the one that took the time to go into the wilderness to prepare for his ministry. Thus, we have 
the season of Lent on our calendar. But you know, this year is kind of yucky, isn't it? Wasn't it just yesterday we were up here singing Christmas carols? And now we're getting ready. We're talking about what we're going to do for Palm Sunday and Easter in just a little over a month. And in these weeks of Lent, one of the things that's incumbent upon me is to help you walk through that wilderness with Jesus. Jesus was crystal clear to his church then, and he's crystal clear to his church today. In Mark 8, 34, and we're going to come to that in about three weeks, he called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, and I want you to listen to this, I want the young people to listen to this and put the phone away. Because that phone's not going to save your soul but the Word of God will. Listen to what Jesus said. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Are you ready? If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Okay. So I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to come to Mojo's Bar and Grill on Sunday morning and we're going to worship. Or we go in it wherever, wherever you are watching this. But that's not what he said. Jesus didn't say, if anyone, he, he did not say, if anyone wants to become my followers, go to church. He said, if anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves take up their cross, and follow me. Now, when I earlier said, and I'm, I'm, I'm boasting a little bit on this, forgive me, Lord, for that, but it's a perfect teaching point. Forty years my bride has put up with me. And there were times when I had to put up with her. But what was that? Why did that happen? Because the first part, let them deny themselves. There were times that I had to do things I did not want to do. And there are many more times that she does things that she does not want to do. But that's what a marriage does to be successful. And Jesus calls us what in Revelation? His bride. He wants to marry the church to the kingdom of God. So he's saying, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. And we feel so good, don't we? Once saved, all we say, ooh, I give my heart to Jesus, except he goes on in Matthew 10 and 38 and says this, and this should scare the hell out of you. Whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Why aren't we preaching that more? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. That those that believe him shall be saved. Well, that's all nice. But the rest of the story says, if you don't follow him, if you don't pay attention, and if you don't take up your cross and follow him, you're not worthy of him. Jesus makes it quite clear that you can say his name all you want. But the road is wide and the gate is narrow. Not everybody that thinks they're going to get into heaven is getting into heaven. And you know how I know that? Because the good book tells me that. I can tell you who is getting into heaven. 
those people that know they're getting into heaven because of the relationship with Christ. Following Jesus is a requirement of discipleship. Whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. So, where are we at? Jesus has gone down, sees his cousin John, he gets baptized. Now, can you imagine this? Here he is. Now, John always had a huge following. So John's there in the River Jordan, which, by the way, is not like the Mississippi. Okay? It's kind of shallow. So John is probably up to his maybe waist. And Jesus comes out, and he wants to get baptized because Jesus was a good Jew. John immerses him in the water, and as Jesus comes up, the clouds split, and a voice from heaven with this, this dove descending on him says, This is my Son, whom I am well pleased. And over in Luke it says, Listen to him. Could you imagine being the bystanders? Holy mackerel. I was just coming out for a lunch and a little walk with the family and check out who's getting baptized today. And now the clouds are talking to us. And you got this bird dancing around. Jesus had to do that. He had to follow the law because he was the fulfillment of the law, and that's a Bible study we're not going to get in there. But that is when he, be in earnest, prepares to begin his ministry. So what does it mean for us to follow Jesus? Why did I just tell you that story? Well, during this time, we are called to face our true nature. Every one of us. Not a single one of us is perfect in this room or on that end of the camera. Some might think we are. Some might talk like we are. Some might act like we are. And that's sad because you are not admitting your true nature. We are fallible. Thus the reason Jesus had to come to earth. So we need to examine the true nature of ourselves. But here's what it is not. It is not a time for self-loathing. You, 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 know, you ever hear that? You guys remember this. You ever hear the term Catholic guilt? Oh, I got Catholic guilt. You know, oh, I did that. It ain't that. That's man-made. That's a contrived bunch of malarkey. So it's not a time for us to be self-loathing and thinking how bad we are. No. On the other hand, it's also not the time for us to be wild in self-pity. And Christians love to do that. Go to the Walmart checkout line and I'll prove my point. How you doing today, Miss Mary? Oh, I hurt so bad. The doctor don't know what's wrong with me. Hm. Okay. I just don't know. Here's the, here's the one that scares me the most. I just don't know what I'm going to do. I, I just can't make up for these mistakes. I just can't make up. Uh, you can make up for any mistake. That's what the grace of God is all about. So Lent's not that. We're not a bunch of Arabs running around the desert beating ourselves with chains and sticks and sackcloth. We're Christians washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we reflect, we don't reflect on what we can't do. We reflect on what we can improve. I've got an area. You all know that. i got a temper. And i got a very short fuse. It's getting longer as I'm getting older. But that's only because I'm more tired. <laughs> huh? Yeah, the TNT is getting a little damp. So I know I have to work on that. But I also know I can't fix that. 
Who can fix that? God's Holy Spirit. Because trust me, in the last six months, I've wanted to explode, not necessarily on the family, but I've wanted to explode on people. And God said, don't do that. Do you know how tempting it would have been to get on Facebook and just flame everybody up in the next county? But God said, don't do that. You'll not only destroy yourself, but you'll look like an idiot and you're going to give them credibility. So, Jax, you need to reflect on whose image you are. Everybody says the boy looks like me. But in fact, when Jax looks in that mirror, he needs to see a picture of Jesus Christ. Because we are created in his image. So we, we examine those things that keep us from being transformed and reflecting the image of Christ. Now, is there anyone in this room that thinks they don't have room for improvement? Because if you do, we're going to go pray right now. So why did Jesus go into this wilderness? I'm almost done, believe it or not. We're going to get out early today. What do you mean, yay? I heard you. Oh, that was you. <laughs> it was the angels, okay. So why did God have Jesus go out into the desert? Well, he didn't have Jesus to go out in the desert. He forced Jesus out in the desert. Because Jesus had to go through these trials and temptations to fulfill the law, one, but to relate to us. God needed to relate to the flesh and blood of us. So he sent Jesus to a manger. Talk about homelessness. Jesus was raised by a stepdad. Did you ever think of that? Stepdads are pretty darn important. Amen. You know why? Because we're loving another child that's not our body, not our blood, but is our heart. And that's what Joseph was to Jesus. So now Jesus is experiencing the stepfather loving him and teaching him his earthly craft. He's been homeless. I mean, that manger wasn't exactly a three-bedroom condo. Now he's following the law. He's relating to the Jews of the time. And then God says, but there's more to do. So into the wilderness, God sends Jesus with his Holy Spirit. Just like God is sending us into the wilderness. Because it was there that Jesus was able to confront Satan and tell him to get behind me. Now, we're going to talk about that over Lent. Satan's out there saying, Look at here, Jesus, look all around. You can have all this. All you have to do is acknowledge me. Jesus says, No, 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 don't want that. Hey, I know you're hungry because you be fasting. Turn these rocks into bread. And he comes right back with the Old Testament. Says, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Satan's saying, well, this ain't working. He said, well, come up. And they go to the Pentecost and says, oh, this is your kingdom. And Jesus looks at him and says, you moron. My kingdom is worth a whole lot more than this group of rocks. My kingdom is eternal. But when Jesus was doing that temptation, he was doing it in our place. How many times, oh, here we go, so much for writing good messages. How many times 
has the world said to you? Man, you don't need to go to college. You're going to be a good basketball player. And you want to be a good basketball player because you're going to make millions of dollars. Then you're going to be happy. We see that every day. Or here's the one that kills me. Ever hear of OnlyFans? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you can make a lot of money. Except you've given up your soul. You've given up a lot more than that too, but you've given up your soul. Or how about people who in business cheat? Or worse. Your old man's getting a little long in the tooth, girl. I got this young fellow that just wants to meet you. He'll never, ever know. And how many people fall for that? That's why Jesus went to the wilderness. To experience that type of temptation so He could pay the price for our sin. But Jesus said no, no, no. Why did Jesus say no? And this is a... Bible study we'll do later when we have a place to do Bible study. Because he knew the Word of God. And he knew how to fight Satan. Because you don't know how to fight him. I'm going to say something and I do not want you to be offended by this. We don't send warriors into war off the street. They got to go through boot camp and advanced training and advanced, advanced training, and then they come together as a unit and they train some more. Then we send them off. What makes us think that we can fight Satan right off the street? You see it on Facebook. I need my prayer warriors. Child, you don't even know what a prayer warrior is because if you did. Number one, you wouldn't be putting all your business on the street through Facebook. And number two, number two, you'd be at church. You'd be studying. Your Bible would not be a decoration on your coffee table that's got seven and a half inches of dust on it. So God right now is saying, Emmanuel Church, you got to go to the wilderness. And boy, I felt like I'm in the wilderness ever since August 26th. I didn't know what to do with myself. And this thing came. And I said, Lord, you've got to be nuts. And then when I heard these two crazy people on my deck talking about it, I thought, oh, Lord, get behind me, Satan. Except too many things fell into place. And then I prayed about it and God said, yeah, this is what I want you to do. But you have got to be in the wilderness first. And trust me, we are just like the Israelis, the Jews, with Moses. Where? In the wilderness. Do we have a permanent home? No. We're blessed to have mojos, but we're still a migrant family. We are in the wilderness. We're learning our we're doing we're learning our footing. And Jesus is calling us to follow him. Because here what happened to Moses? Anyone know what happened to Moses in the uh, the the, uh, the Jewish people with Moses? What happened to them when they followed Moses? You don't know? Well, they were down in Egypt in the Sinai Desert. They were banished there. They were there. And Moses led them for 40 years out of captivity to the Promised Land. But they finally had to follow Moses. And who was Moses following? God. And that's what he's telling us. There are hordes of people outside in Tippecanoe County and Alcorn County and all these counties around that are lost in the desert. And he needs to send people where they can follow. 
We can't lead if we don't know who to follow. Remember that song we sang last week? Jennifer sang it as a special. Then we sang it as a closing hymn. And then it was on the benediction. Here I am, Lord. Today, God is calling you into the wilderness. Every one of us. He's saying, are you ready to come? Are we going to be like Isaiah and say, here I am, Lord? Or are we just going to ignore that call? Following Jesus doesn't mean you have to have a miserable life. Following Jesus means you're going to have a better life. Following Jesus means you'll have a marriage that will last for 40 years. Following Jesus means that even when your kids drive you nuts, you're restrained from murdering them. Following Jesus means that you can appreciate the beauty of grandchildren. Following Jesus means that you can rest easy at night that if the Lord were to call me home, I know where I'm going to be. I'm going to close with this. And the crowd, rat, the crowd, the crowd roars. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So he gets out of the wilderness. He's just fought off Satan. He's coming back. He's about to collect all his disciples and start doing his 33 months of ministry. And why does he tell the crowd that John's been boasting about Jesus too? And he tells his disciples, those that have been gathered up, the time is fulfilled. That means he's done everything he had to do to get this next chapter going. The kingdom of God is at hand. Anyone want to take a guess what he was saying there? He is the kingdom of God. And then he says this, word, this one word, and we don't like this word at all. We despise this next word. He didn't say confess. He said repent. Do you know what repent means? It means stop doing what you're doing and do a 180 degree opposite. If you've got a short temper... And you blow up at everybody and say, repent. doesn't mean, oh, I'm so sorry, God. I got married to, I'm mad at Jennifer today and I, I hollered at her. He said, man, I've heard this song 73,000 times over the last 30-some years. Why don't you stop doing it? That's repenting. He didn't say confess. He said repent. And then he said this and believe in the good news. The time has been fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Change your ways and believe in my gospel. Follow me. Follow me. Yep, we're not too far from those kindergarten kids playing follow the leader, are we? Except Jesus needs to be the leader. So you've got a choice right here, right today. All of us, every one of us, all 14 of us have a choice. Who are we going to follow? Are we going to follow Christ or are we going to follow the world? Now here's something. People absolutely misread the gospel. Because you're following Christ doesn't mean you can't have a normal life. It means you're going to have a better normal life. Isn't it odd 
that the one place that allowed us to worship was a bar. Everybody knew we were starting this thing. It was all over Facebook. John Ross put it all over Tip of News. Not a single church said you can come use our basement in off hours or something. Mojo's, a bar and grill did. And did I ask you to use Mojo's or did you volunteer? They volunteered. See, Jesus isn't saying you can't live in the world. He said, you got to live in the world. I'm not asking you to be a monk. What I'm asking you to do is use my, my plan of life. As for me and my household, we will follow and we will serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Old Rugged Cross. Is that in there? Okay. What's wrong? Is it in there? Am I done? Yeah. Let's just do one verse of this. Let's stand. Sing it loud. Sing loud. So I can hear you. Sing where I can hear you.